Hey, this is Owen. If you're comfortable, leave your first name and state at the sound of the tiny truck backing up. Hey, I'm from California. I just wanted to share a personal story. Uh, I have a profile on a dating website, and the other day this one girl, or this one woman, I should say, texted me just so she could insult me for being an atheist. Dating as an atheist is very hard, and I take personal offense to the fact that Christians claim that they're the ones being persecuted when they're the ones persecuting us this way. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that story. I really like your show. Bye. Yeah, I appreciate that. Atheists really are persecuted. Pagans are also persecuted terribly. Evangelicals, Christian extremists, are technically the minority. I think they are a minority in the country, but they are the, they're the group in power despite being a minority. It's kind of like rich people. Rich people are a vast minority. There are not anywhere near as many rich people in the U.S. or in the world as there are poor people in the U.S. or the world. But they are the people in power. They call all the shots, they control everything, and they persecute the people who aren't like them, basically. It doesn't really bother me generally, but something that does bother me deeply is being persecuted for being an ex-Jehovah's Witness. Like, Jehovah's Witnesses persecuting me, treating me like shit because I'm an ex-Jehovah's Witness. Disrespecting me, hating me, thinking that I'm inferior to them inherently because I left the religion and, and no other reason. You don't really understand what it's like to be persecuted until you're persecuted. For me, the, the first experience that I ever had with persecution, the pain that you get from that, was from being hated for being disfellowshipped. But since then, I've had some experiences with it from being an atheist, because people just hate me, because I don't believe like them, or whatever else. I was also persecuted as a Jehovah's Witness, of course. There are a lot of Christians out there who hate Jehovah's Witnesses. It just sucks, man. It just sucks. And everybody who has to deal with this kind of thing needs to be in the same boat together. We have to support each other and work together. Everybody. LGBT people, atheists, pagans, all of us, we need to get together and work together to try to protect each other and help each other in any way we can to shield each other from the persecution that we deal with. Being straight and white and male, I have to deal with significantly less persecution than the vast majority of the rest of the community, I would say. But I do still actually understand what it's like, and it is not fun. Hi, Owen. Uh, my name is Genesis. And yes, believe me, the concept of an atheist named Genesis, the irony is not lost on me. Uh, before I continue, let me just say, I had a friend whose last name was Anderson. He would constantly, constantly, every person he met at the pizza shop, at the grocery store, everybody would say, Mr. Anderson, like they're in the fucking Matrix. Like he hasn't heard that joke 60,000 times. Oh my God. It must be the most frustrating thing in the world. To hear the same joke over and over and over again. And I understand that. And for that reason, I wasn't going to say a word about your name. So thank you for preempting the joke. I've got your back. You don't have to worry. Let's keep listening. Genesis, the irony is not lost on me. Uh, the question that I have for you is, especially now with the Roe versus Wade thing, People are making the comparison of The Handmaid's Tale. And normally I would chalk that up to being a conspiracy theory, but as we know, evangelicals and the like would very much love this country to be a theocracy. Do you think something like The Handmaid's Tale is a possibility? Because even though I don't generally subscribe to conspiracy theories, I could actually kind of see it happening. What do you think? Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate the voicemail. I've never actually seen The Handmaid's Tale or read it, so I don't know what it's about, but evangelicals tell us exactly what they want. They tell us the ideal world that they would like to live in. There isn't really a logical flow to what they're trying to do. Like, for example, if they believe that a three-day-old embryo 
is an actual person, logically, if they want to reduce abortions, then they should encourage birth control, right? That's how you reduce abortions, encourage birth control. No, that that's not what they do. That's not what they want. Their belief system does not have a logical flow. Not only do they want to completely eliminate abortion, they want to eliminate birth control too, nonsensically. It isn't about saving a life, quote unquote. It was never about that. It was always about controlling people's behavior. And they don't want anybody to sleep with anybody, period, unless their intent is to have a child. Their backwards views of society match up with what I've been told The Handmaid's Tale is. Like I said, never read it, never seen it. But I don't consider it a conspiracy theory when you can look at the things that they believe and the things that they want and match it up one to one for what our worst fears were in the first place. So your question is, is The Handmaid's Tale realistic? That's what they want. Will they get it? I don't think they're going to get that. I mean, people walking around all covered up and everything. I, I deeply doubt they're going to go all the way there. They do want it, though, and they will continue to fight for it until they get it. Uh, so take that for what you will. Every win that they get, they take another step back and say, now we want this. So we just have to keep fighting. That's the point. We have to keep fighting no matter what. Hi, Owen. My name is Tom. Thank you again, buddy. I really appreciate all you do. I like how you go after these phony healers and these phony preachers such as Copeland. There's also Benny Hinn. And, uh, Benny Hinn. I know. I have not covered the dude enough. I need to cover him more. In fact, I should probably do a Sunday long-form video on him. Yeah, that, that guy is something else. And others who have simply faked their healing. And like you say, I say it's sinful and wicked. Thank you so much for going after these knuckleheads. Blessings, brother. Yeah, I appreciate that very much. These people are very, very disingenuous and underhanded, and, and some of the things that they do, it's just dirty. It is absolutely dirty. That being said, I actually got an, a second voicemail from this guy immediately after the first one. I'm not going to play it. I don't I don't know that he would want me to play it, but it was a Cheyenne blessing from the Cheyenne Nation, basically. It was like a prayer from, I believe, a native tribe i thought that was kind of interesting i appreciate that it was really interesting and of course i don't believe it but i appreciate the sentiment very much so thank you so much for sending that in next one is an email and it came from haunted shadows legacy title is question about commercial cults sup owen i go by haunted shadows legacy on twitch and youtube you can just refer to me as haunted or hsl if you want Thought I'd slip in this question for you about commercial cults. I know you tend to focus on political and religious cults, but I've also had experience with the commercial types. Have you considered looking into commercial cults? I'm talking about ones based on multi-level marketing, MLM for short, such as Young Living, Dutera, Monat, or Monet, I think, Monet, something or other, Tupperware, and Unique. While political and, wait, is Tupperware an MLM? I thought that was just the name of a product that you buy at a store. Turn my world upside down right now, HSL. While political and religious cults have a profound, noticeable, and direct effect on a victim's mental state and behavior, commercial cults seem more subtle and insidious. The commercial aspect can even drive some people into deep debt. There's also significant crossover between religion and MLMs. Thought it'd be worth bringing up just for spreading the word, if nothing else. By the way, here's a fun fact. Because they're so slow, sloths can hold their breath underwater for around 40 minutes. See you in the live stream. Have a good one. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, MLMs are definitely classified as cults. The guy that wrote the bite model, Stephen Hassan, has talked about multi-level marketing schemes at length. They use a lot of supernatural claims to manipulate and control people. And they do a lot of the same control techniques as more traditional cults like Jonestown and Heaven's Gate and stuff like that. So yeah, MLMs definitely qualify as cults without a shadow of a doubt, especially Young Living. That one's right at the top of my list. I've done a video about them before, but it may be on Genetically Modified Skeptics channel. I think we did a video about them together or maybe I did one and then he did one. I don't remember. Anyways, yeah. He was adversely affected by Young Living, and I talked about them for that reason when we originally met, I think. So anyway, yeah, thank you so much for the email. That is an important subject to cover. I just haven't talked about MLMs enough. Uh, I probably should more than I do, though. 
Next question is from Jennifer from Georgia. Title is Question for Fireside Chat. Hi, Owen. I love your channel. My question for you is this. If Jehovah's Witnesses have such a problem with the education system and things like birthdays and holidays, the Pledge of Allegiance, and discourage higher education, why don't they operate their own private schools? Is it because they want their kids to act as missionaries in the public school system? Is it logistically not possible? Thanks for your work and keep it up. Kind regards, Jennifer from Georgia. Don't give them any ideas. (laughs) No, I think it's um, probably a logistical problem. I think they're trying to keep costs down, especially now. They're trying to find more efficient ways of disseminating information to people, and they don't want to... They want everything that their people do to be on a volunteer basis. If they had schools of their own, Jehovah's Witnesses, they'd have to hire people to do certain work. Right now, everything that they have can be on a volunteer basis. Bethel, on the other hand, they don't pay people, usually, to work at Bethel, I don't believe. Bethel is like their cult compound their headquarters where you live and work every single day they don't pay you to live there as far as i know they give you a stipend for food sometimes i believe but they supply the living space the dorm or whatever that's considered your stipend or that's considered your pay just living in their dorms they also pay missionaries or they used to at the very least when i was little they would pay missionaries to go overseas and work or whatever else but i think they want to keep their costs down generally that's my guess for why they don't open private schools and also i think they're mostly okay with the education that kids get from public schools they just want to supplement it with more information like they don't accept evolution obviously as the fact that it is and they don't accept a lot of other scientific stuff but for the most part they're okay with them learning about math and things like that i think it's probably a financial barrier to entry that would be my guess Next email is from First Amendment News. The title is Rejoice for the End is Near? Question mark. Hello, and thank you for everything you do. I would like to know if you think that overturning Roe v. Wade could end the GOP as we know it. I believe you did a video a while ago explaining how the evangelical church became so intertwined with the GOP. While the evangelicals do have their hot-button issues, it is the anti-abortion movement that binds them together and ties them to the GOP. If this is the case, what will be their next big cause? It's a really good point, and it's a point that I brought up uh, a year ago, maybe, somewhere in there. I pointed out that Trump controlled the government, every aspect of the government, for the first two years of his term. He had the Supreme Court, the Senate, the House, and the the executive branch, the presidency. And abortion wasn't abolished at the time. Weird, right? Why wasn't abortion abolished at the time? You would think that they would reform the U.S. into what they wanted it to look like if they controlled every branch of the government like that. I suspected that they weren't going to change anything about abortion because they can use it as a donation tool they can use it as something to get people whipped into a blood frenzy to donate harder basically but lo and behold here we are they're erasing roe v wade i guess maybe they just didn't have the votes that they needed to get it done at the time that's my guess anyway let's keep reading the email I don't think the anti-woke slash anti-CRT movement is going to withstand the test of time, mainly because most evangelicals don't know what CRT is, and it's very hard to get people to continue to fight for or against a cause they don't understand. The anti-LGBTQ movement is a non-starter. While they might be able to protest against LGBTQ people in some cases, most Americans know and respect people who identify as LGBTQ. They won't want to be involved in in any meaningful way with protesting against LGBTQ rights. I think I agree with you on that point. They may focus their attention on the school voucher program they keep trying to push. I don't see how this could ever get past the separation of church and state. I know they may start schools that don't teach the Bible or try to teach religion from a historical perspective with a strong emphasis on Christianity, but could this fight bring them to the polls in the numbers that they need? My point is that if anti-abortion brought them together then overturning Roe v. Wade might not make them stronger and could be the beginning of the end for the evangelical GOP partnership. I appreciate the email. Thank you for sending it to me, First Amendment News. Here's my take on it. I don't think abortion is the thing that tied them to it. I don't think that anti-LGBT sentiment was either, or CRT or anti-woke anything. You know what I think ties them together? The style of messaging, the rhetoric that they use. I think the thing that links them is hating and fearing anything at all. 
All the Republican Party needs to do is point in a direction, and the evangelical voting bloc will go running. They'll freak out. They'll lose their minds. Every pastor from here to Texas in evangelical churches will talk about this thing that they've fabricated as being a huge problem. They don't need to lean on being anti-woke or anti-CRT or anti-LGBT or anti-abortion or any of that. They don't need to lean on any of it, really. They just need to lean into the rhetoric. That is it. That's my take on it. And I appreciate the email. It was an interesting question.